guys you're welcome thank you so much for clicking hope you guys are doing great so tozaki nike is going to be explaining 41 scientific errors in the bible so let's watch let's analyze what the bible say about modern science in the beginning first book book of genesis first chapter it's mentioned it says almighty god created the heavens and the earth in six days and talks about a evening and a morning referring to a 24 hour day today scientists tell us that the universe cannot be created in a 24 hour period of six days quran 2 speaks about six ayams the arabic word singular is yom plural is ayam it can either mean a day of 24 hours or it is a very long period and yawn and epoch scientists say we have no objection in agreeing that the universe it could have been created in six very long period point number two bible says in genesis chapter number one verse three and five light was created on first day genesis chapter one verse 14 to 19 the cause of light stars and the sun etc was created on fourth day how can the cause of light be created on the fourth day later than the light which came into existence on the first day it's unscientific hmm? further the bible says genesis chapter 1 verse 9 to 13 earth was created on the third day how can you have a night and day without the earth the day depends upon the rotation of the earth without the earth created how can you have a night and day hmm. point number four hmm. genesis chapter number one Verse 9 to 13 says, Earth was created on the third day. Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 to 19 says, The sun and the moon was created on the fourth day. Today, science tells us that Earth is part of the parent body, the sun. It cannot come into existence before the sun. It's unscientific. Wow. Point number 5. Okay. The Bible says in Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 11 to 13, The vegetation, the herbs, the shrubs, the trees, they were created on third the third day. And the sun... Genesis chapter number 1, verse 14 to 19, was created on the fourth day. How can the vegetation come into existence without sunlight? And how can they survive without sunlight? Mm. Point number 6, that the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 16, that God created two lights. The greater light, the sun, to rule the day, and the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. The actual translation, if you go to the Hebrew text, it is lamps. Lamps, having light of its own. And that you'll come to know better if you read both the verses. Genesis chapter 1, verse 16 as well as 17. Verse number 17 says, And Almighty God placed them in the firmament to give light to the earth. To give light to the earth. Indicating that sun and the moon have its own light, which is in contradiction with established scientific knowledge that we have. There are certain people who try and reconciliate and say that the six days mentioned in the Bible, it actually refers to epochs, like the Quran, long period, not 624 days. It's illogical. You read the Bible, evening, morning, it clearly states 24 hours, it indicates. But even if I use a concordis approach, no problem. I agree with your illogical argument. Yet, they will only be able to solve the first scientific error of six days creation, and second, that first day light and third day earth. The remaining four, yet they cannot solve. Either the world will perish or the world will live forever. Both cannot take place simultaneously. It's unscientific. But this is exactly what the Bible says. It's mentioned in the Bible. In the book of Hebrews, chapter number 1, verse number 10 and 11. And the book of Psalms, chapter number 102, verse number 25 and 26, that Almighty God created the heavens and the earth and they will perish. Exactly opposite is mentioned in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number 1, verse number 4, and the book of Psalms, chapter number 78, verse number 69, that the earth will abide forever. I leave it to Dr. William Campbell to choose which of the two verses are unscientific. The first pair or the second pair? One has to be unscientific. Both cannot take place. The world cannot abide forever as well as perish. It's unscientific. The Bible says in Job, chapter 26, verse 11, that the pillars of the heaven will tremble. Quran says in Surah Luqman chapter 31 verse number 10 that the heavens are without any pillars. Don't you see it? Don't you see the heavens are without any pillars? Bible says 
Heaven has got pillars. Not only do the heavens have got pillars, Bible says in the first book of Samuel, chapter number two, verse number eight, as well as the book of Job, chapter number nine, verse number six, and the book of Psalms, chapter number 75, verse number three, that even the earth have got pillars. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, chapter number one, verse number 29, that God has given you all the herbs bearing seeds, the trees bearing fruits, those that bear seed as meat for you. New International Version says the seed bearing plant and the trees bearing fruits, bearing seeds are food for you, all of them. Today, even a layman knows that there are several poisonous plants like wild berries, strychnine, datura, plants containing alkaloid, oleander, buckeye poid, that which if you ingest, if you eat, there are high possibilities you may die. How come the creator of the universe and human beings doesn't know that if you have these plants, you will die? I hope Dr. William Campbell doesn't give this vegetarian diet to his patients. The Bible has a scientific test how to identify a true believer. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 16, verse number 17 and 18. It says that there will be signs for true believers and among the signs, in my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak foreign tongues, new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink deadly poison, they shall not be harmed. And when they place their hand over the sick, they shall be cured. This is a scientific test. In scientific terminology, it's known as the confirmatory test for a true Christian believer. In the past 10 years of my life, I have personally interacted with thousands of Christians, including missionary. I have not come across a single Christian who has passed this confirmatory test of the Bible. I have not come across a single Christian who took poison. I have not come across any who took poison and who has not died. And in scientific terminology, this is also called as a falsification test. That means if a false person tries and does this test, takes poison, he will die. And a false person will not dare attend this test. If you are not a true Christian believer, you will not dare attend this test. Because if you try and attempt the falsification test, you will fail. So, a person who is not a true Christian believer will never attempt this test. I have read the book, the Quran, the Bible in the light of history and science, written by Dr. William Campbell. And I assume that he is a true Christian believer. And at least I would like him to confirm to me about the falsification test. Please be rest assured. Please be rest assured. I will not ask Dr. William Campbell to have deadly poison because I don't want to jeopardize the debate. <laughs> what I'll do, I will only ask him to speak in foreign tongues, in new languages. And as many of you may be aware, that India is a land which has more than thousand languages and dialects. Only thing I request him is to say these three words, 100 rupees in the 17 official languages. There are only 17 official languages in India. And to make it easier for Dr. William Campbell, I've got a 100 rupee note. And this has all the 17 languages mentioned here. Besides English and Hindi, I will help him. I'll give him a beginning. Ek so rupiah in Hindi. <laughs> the remaining 15 languages are here. I request him to read. I know the test says they will speak foreign languages on their own without the help of reading. But I want to make the test easier. I want to see someone passing the test. I have not seen anyone. <laughs> so if he can't say it on his own or from his memory, at least read it. I don't mind. I will accept it. And I request the chairperson to give it to Dr. William Campbell. <laughs> he has his rebuttal. 15 languages. Ek so rupiah, three words only. Bible says in Genesis, chapter number 9, verse number 13 to 17, 
that after God, at the time of Noah, submerged the world by flood, and after the flood subsides, he said, I put up a rainbow in the sky as a promise to the humankind never to submerge the world again by water. To the unscientific person, it may be quite good. Oh, rainbow is a sign of Almighty God, never to submerge the world by flood again. But today we know very well that rainbow is due to the refraction of sunlight with rain or mist. Surely there may have been thousands of rainbows before the time of Noah, peace be upon him. To say it was not there before Noah's time, you have to assume that the law of refraction did not exist, which is unscientific. The Bible says in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 14, verse number 14 and 53, it gives a normal way for disinfecting a house from plague of leprosy. Disinfecting a house from plague of leprosy. It says that take two birds, kill one bird, take wood, scarlet, hyssop, and the other living bird, dip it in water, and under running water, later on, sprinkle the house seven times with it. Sprinkle the house with blood to disinfect against plague of leprosy? We know blood is a good media of germ, bacteria, as well as toxin. I hope Dr. William Campbell doesn't use this method of disinfecting the OT, the operation theater. It's mentioned in the book of Leviticus. Chapter number 12, verse number 1 to 5. And we know medically that after a mother gives birth to a child, the postpartum period, it is unhygienic. To say it's unclean religiously, I've got no objection. But Leviticus, chapter number 12, verse number 1 to 5 says that after a woman gives birth to a male child, she will be unclean for seven days. And the period of uncleanliness will continue for 33 days more. If she gives birth to a female child, she'll be unclean for two weeks and the period of uncleanliness will continue for 66 days. In short, if a woman gives birth to a male child, a son, she is unclean for 40 days. If she gives birth to a female child, a daughter, she is unclean for 80 days. I would like Dr. William Campbell to explain to me scientifically how come a woman remain unclean for double the period if she gives birth to a female child as compared to a male child. In Book of Numbers, Chapter number 5, verse number 11 to 31. I'll just say in brief. It says that the priest should take holy water in a vessel, take dust from the floor and put it into the vessel. And that's the bitter water. And after cursing it, give it to the woman. And if the woman has committed adultery, after she drinks it, the curse will enter her body, the stomach will swell, the thigh will rot, and she shall be cursed by the people. If the woman has not committed adultery, she will remain clean and she will bear the seed. A novel method of identifying whether a woman has committed adultery or not. You know, today in the world, there are thousands of cases pending in different parts of the world, in different courts of law, only on the assumption that someone has alleged that the woman has committed adultery. I had read in the newspapers and I came to know from the media that the president of this great country, Mr. Bill Clinton, he was involved in a sex scandal about two years back. I wonder that why didn't the American court use this bitter water test for adultery? He would have gone scot-free immediately. <laughs> why didn't the Christian missionaries of this great country, especially those who are in the medical field, like my respected Dr. William Campbell, use this bitter water test to bail out the president immediately. It's mentioned in Ezra chapter number 2, verse number 1, and Nehemiah chapter number 7, verse number 6, the context, that when the people return from exile from Babylon, when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, when he released the men from Israel, they came back from captivity, and the list of the people are given. The list is given in Ezra chapter number 2, Verse number 2 to 63, and Nehemiah chapter number 7, verse number 7 up to 65. The list is given with the names as well as number of people released. In these 60 verses, there are no less than 18 times the name is exactly the same, but the number is different. There are no less than 18 contradictions in less than 60 verses of these two chapters.
This is the list. I don't have time to run through the list. There are no less than 18 different contradictions in less than 60 verses. Further, it's mentioned in Ezra, chapter number 2, verse number 64, that the total congregation, if you add up, if you add up, it comes to 42,360. And if you read in Nehemiah, chapter number 7, verse number 66, they also the total is the same, 42,360. But if you add up all these verses, which I had to do my homework, this is a list. This is a list of Ezra. This is a list of Nehemiah. Ezra chapter number 2, Nehemiah chapter number 7. If you add up, I had to do my homework. If you add up, in Ezra chapter number 2, it doesn't come to 42,360. It comes to 29,818. And if you add up, Nehemiah chapter number 7, even there it doesn't come to 42,360. It comes to 31,089. The author of the Bible, presumed to be almighty God, does not know simple addition. In Ezra chapter number 2, Verse number 65, it says there were 200 singing men and women. Nehemiah chapter number 7, verse 67, there were 245 singing men and women. Were they 200 or were they 245 singing men and women? Context is the same, a mathematical contradiction. It's mentioned in the second Kings, chapter number 24, verse number 8, that Joachim was 18 years old when he began to reign Jerusalem. And he reigned for three months, second Chronicles, Chapter number 36, verse number 9 says that Joachim was 8 years old when he began to reign and he reigned for 3 months 10 days. Was Joachim 18 years when he began to reign or was he 8 years old? Did he reign for 3 months or did he reign for 3 months 10 days? Further it's mentioned in the first Kings. Chapter number 7, verse number 26, that in Solomon's temple in his molten sea, he had 2,000 baths. In 2 Chronicles, chapter number 4, verse number 5, he had 3,000 baths. Did he have 2,000 baths or did he have 3,000 baths? That I leave it upon Dr. William Campbell to decide, which is correct. There is a clear-cut mathematical contradiction. It's mentioned in the first Kings, chapter number 15, verse number 33, that Basha, he died in the 26th year of reign of Asa. And... Second Chronicles, chapter number 16, verse number 1 says that Basha invaded Judah in the 36th year of the reign of Asa. How can Basha invade 10 years after his death? It's unscientific. I can give you a list of unfulfilled prophecy. For example, if you read Genesis, chapter number 4, verse number 12, it says, God told Cain, you will never be able to settle. You will be a wanderer. Few verses later on, Genesis chapter 4, verse 17 says, Cain built up a city. Unfulfilled prophecy. If you read Jeremiah chapter number 36, verse number 30, it says that Joachim, the father of Joachim, no one will be able to sit on his throne. The throne of David, no one will be able to sit after Joachim. If you read later on, 2 Kings chapter number 24, verse number 6, it says that Joachim, after he died, later on, Joachim sat on the throne. Unfulfilled prophecy. One is sufficient to prove it's not the word of God. I can give plenty. If it's Ezekiel, chapter number 26, it says that Nebuchadnezzar, he will destroy Tyre. We come to know that Alexander the Great was the person who destroyed Tyre. Unfulfilled prophecy. Isaiah, chapter number 7, verse number 14 says, prophesizing of the coming of a person who will be born to a virgin, his name shall be Emmanuel. They say, the Christians, it refers to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Born to a virgin, the Hebrew word there is Amla, which means not a virgin, a young lady. The word for virgin in Hebrew is Betula, which is not there. Even if we agree, we are using concordance. We agree. Virgin? Virgin. No problem. <laughs> it says, he will be called Emmanuel. Nowhere in the Bible is Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is called as Emmanuel. Unfulfilled prophecy. If you read in the Bible, it mentions in Leviticus chapter number 12, verse number 1 to 2, that women give out seed. So actually, Bible is copying from Hippocrates. And Bible says in Job, Bible says in Job, chapter number 10, verse number 9 and 10, that we have made the human being from clay, like poured out milk and curdled cheese. 
poured out milk and curd oil cheese is exact plagiarization from hippocrates why plagiarization because surely that's not the word of god that portion is unscientific it was said by hippocrates and galen the greeks that you mean means i created like curd oil cheese and bible copies that exactly in leviticus chapter number 11 verse number 6 that hair is a cut chewer we know that hair doesn't chew cut previously people thought by the movement of the hair now we know hair is not a cut chewer neither does it have a compartmentalized stomach it's mentioned in the proverbs chapter number 6 verse number 7 that ant has got no ruler no seer no chief today we know that ants are sophisticated insect they have a very good system of labor in which they have chief they have foreman they have workers they even have queen they even have a ruler therefore bible is unscientific furthermore it's mentioned in the bible in genesis chapter 3 verse 14 and isaiah chapter 65 verse number 25 that serpents eat dust no zoological book says serpent eats dust it's mentioned book of leviticus chapter number 11 verse number 20 among the abomination things fowls with four feet they are an abomination and some scholars say that fowl is the wrong translation of the hebrew word uf in king james it should be insect or wing creature and in new national version it says wing creature but it says all insects which are four footed are an abomination they are detestable for you i want to ask dr william campbell which insects have got four feet even a student who has passed elementary school knows that insects have got six feet there is no bird in the world there is no fowl in the world there is no insect in the world which has got four feet furthermore there are mythical animals and fabulous animals mentioned in the bible as though they exist for example unicorn it's mentioned in the book of isaiah chapter 34 verse number 7 talking about unicorn as it exists you look up in the dictionary it says the animal which has got a horse's body and a horn which is only available in myths that william campbell gave a reply to nuh alayhi salam i am a person who is a concordis approach with the bible and conflict approach with the quran because both with alhamdulillah quran will pass the test and even if i agree with dr william campbell and i agree with him it is right that it was 15 feet above the highest mountain but it's mentioned in genesis chapter number 7 verse number 19 and 20 that the full world was submerged under water and furthermore archaeological evidence shows today and the time of noah's time if you calculate by genealogy it comes to in the 21st to 22nd century bc archaeological evidence shows today that the third dynasty of babylon and 11 dynasty of egypt were present at the 21st and 22nd century bc and there was no evidence of flood and they remain uninterrupted therefore archaeological evidence show us that it's impossible that the earth was submerged the full earth was submerged under water in the 21st 22nd century bc what about the quran what about the quran point number 1 quran does not give a date but the 21st century bc or 50th century bc no date point number 2 nowhere does the quran say the full world was submerged under water it speaks about noah alayhi salam and his qaum and his people if you read genesis chapter number 6 verse number 15 16 it speaks about almighty god telling noah alayhi salam that build an ark and it gives the length 300 cubit in length 50 cubit in breadth and height 30 cubit cubit is 1 and 1/2 feet the brother made a mistake it's 1 and 1/2 feet and in new international version it says 450 feet in length and 75 feet in breadth and approximately 45 feet in height it's 30 cubit in height if you measure this i've done the calculation it comes to less than 150000 cubit feet in volume and area wise 33750 and the bible says there were three flows ground floor first story second story so multiply by 3 you get an answer of 101000 250 square feet that is the area imagine a pair of all the species of the world was accommodated in 101250 square feet imagine is it possible millions of species are there in the world if i tell in this auditorium 1 million people came in this auditorium will you believe i remember i think last year i gave a talk in kerala and there were 1 million people that's the biggest gathering ever this alhamdulillah by allah's grace 1 million people i could not see the end it was not an auditorium it was a big beach i couldn't see anyone only few people in the front that's all 
few compared to the 1 million people that were there. If you see on the video, you will realize how big is 1 million. Somewhat like Arafat, you see 2.5 million people in Arafat. In an area of 101,250 square feet or 150,000 cubic feet, it is impossible. And above that, they stayed for 40 days, eating, going for call of nature. If I say 1 million people came into the outdoor, will you believe? It's mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 4, verse number 8. It says, the same reference which Dr. William Campbell used about tempting, the devil took him, that Jesus Christ peace be upon him, to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth and its glory. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 4, verse number 5. The devil took him to a high mountain and showed him the glory of all the kingdoms of the world. Now, even if you go to the tallest mountain, the highest mountain in the world, that's Mount Everest, and supposingly you have a very good vision and can see for thousands of miles together, yet you will not be able to see all the kingdoms of the world because today we know the earth is spherical. You will not be able to see the kingdom of the opposite side of the world. The only way you will be able to see if the earth was flat. That's the description what the Bible gives. The earth is flat. Furthermore, the same description is repeated in the book of Daniel, chapter number 4, verse number 10 and 11. It says in the dream that the tree grew up into the heaven and there when the tree grew up into the heaven, it grew up so much that everyone from all the ends of the earth, they could see the tree. This is only possible if the shape of the earth was flat. If a tree is very long and the shape of the earth was flat, it's possible. Today, it's a universal fact that the world is spherical, you will never be able to see the tree, however much long it is, from the opposite side of the spherical shape of the earth. Furthermore, if you read, it's mentioned in the first chronicles, chapter number 16, verse number 30, that the earth does not move. The same is repeated in the book of Psalms, chapter number 93, verse number 1, that Almighty God, He has stabilized the earth. It's mentioned in the second Kings, chapter number 8, verse number 26, it says that Ahaziah, that Ahaziah, he was 22 years old when he began to reign. Second Chronicles, chapter number 22, verse number 2 says that he was 42 years old when he began to reign. Was he 22 years old or was he 42 years old? Mathematical contradiction. Furthermore, in Second Chronicles, chapter number 21, verse number 20, it says that Joram, the father of Ahaziah, he reigned at the age of 32 and he reigned for 8 years. And he died at the age of 40. Immediately Ahaziah became the next ruler at the age of 42. Father died at the age of 40. Immediately son takes over who is at the age of 42. How can a son be two years older than the father? <laughs> Believe me, even, even in Hollywood film, you will not be able to produce it. In Hollywood film, you can produce a unicorn, which I mentioned in my talk. Unicorn, you can have cockroaches, which the Bible speaks about. Cockroaches and, and dragons and serpents. But in Hollywood, you cannot even show a son being two years older than the father. It cannot even be a miracle. Even in miracle, it's not possible. It's mentioned in the Bible, in 2 Samuel, chapter number 24, verse number 9, that the people that were involved in the battlefield, it gives a list of these people, in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse number 9, and it says that people that took part, 800,000 of the men of Israel took part, and 500,000 of the men of Judah. Same, if you see other places, 1 Chronicle chapter 21, verse number 5, it says that 1,100,000 people took part in the battlefield from the men of Israel, and 10,460 men took part of Judah. Was it 800,000 people who took part from the men of Israel or was it 1,100,000? Was it 5 lakh people of Judah that took part or 10,460? A clear-cut contradiction. Second Samuel, chapter number 6, verse number 23, that Michelle, the daughter of Saul, she had no sons. Second Samuel, chapter 21, verse number 8, Michelle, the daughter of Saul, had 5 sons. One place it says, no children, no son, no daughter. Other place, five sons. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 1, verse number 16. 
It says about the genealogy of J.S. Caspi's Beponim, as well as Luke chapter number 3, verse number 23. And it says that Jesus' father, the Joseph, his father was Jacob. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 16. And Luke chapter 3, verse number 23, Jesus' father Joseph, his father was Heli. Did Jesus' father Joseph had two fathers? What do you call a person who has got two fathers? Or was it Haley or was it Jacob? Thank you, Clear Dr. Mike. Thank you very much. Okay. Ah, the Fatwa scientific errors. Wow. This man did his assignment very well. Very well. For him to actually, you know, quote a lot of Bible verses as a Muslim, giving us we proof where the errors were. And in total, he, he accumulated everything. And in total, it was 41 errors. It started with Genesis. He spoke about the creation. So he said that there are some things that some things got created on earth that did not make sense. How? He said there are some parts that are supposed to come first before the other. But the other one came first before the, that. It's not possible for you to say this about moon and day, whereas the flowers don't have sun to shine upon on the flowers like you know when god created the nature the flowers before he now said okay create another day he created the moon and the day now said how come the sun and day the flowers need sun to grow but all me i will say is that uh, no one can question god how the bible came about is only god that can answer well you guys might see it as errors but you know, there are some things that doesn't make sense in the sight of men, but it makes sense in the sight of God. There are some things that you, you expect, just for instance now, you are expecting a miracle from God. And maybe for instance, you are thinking, the person you are depending on to, ask, to assist you financially, the person has promised you everyone hurts, and the person has failed. And God has sent somebody that you least expect, somebody that... You don't even relate to that much and God just used that person to bless you. To you, does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. You'll be like, ah, ah, this person. I didn't even know this person had money. Like, seriously, this person, God, ah, why this person that I've put my hope on just disappointed me like that? That's how God is. God works in a way that it does not make sense to humans. Like, if we see it, Yes, there are lots of errors he made mention of about Jesus. Yes, to me, I'm, I'm a human. I will also be, you know, accept the fact that it's kind of contradicting it, itself. Like the Bible kind of, you know, there are some places that, you know, when you read it in the Bible, you'll be wondering, ah, they mentioned this man as the father of his son. And they mention another person later in another. But, well, all I can say is that what does not make sense to humans makes sense to God. One thing I love about this video is how, you know, Zach Nike explained everything without interruption. Like, I don't know how he was able to gather those information on his head. Because he listed like almost 40 something chapters in the Bible. He mentioned Genesis, he mentioned Nehemiah, he mentioned Jeremiah, he mentioned... Ah, ah, the man really did well. He really did well. He, he really knows a lot about the Bible. And that was one thing I love so much about this video. And, wow, that was a beautiful one. Let me know your thoughts, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.